Katia V5, I received the following comment. So, is it possible to match freeform surface to existing surface? So, this will be regarding imaginary shape subdivisions, just like within this video. And uh, let's see, within Fusion, this can be done really easy using the pull feature, and that will work for both a freeform display surface over there, and they can be linked to existing surfaces or even to meshes such as 3D scans. As we can see over here, I made a separate video regarding those. So these are regarding Fusion, and now I want to discuss Katia and how we can uh, attempt to do a match between a freeform and an existing surface over here. It is quite uh, interesting that within Shape Sculptor we have the reverse. So if you're going to take a look at Shape Sculptor, we're going to have the mesh morphing. So this will be the reverse, which means that I have the possibility to deform a mesh, which in this case will be, for example, Tessellation 1. And we can specify a reference. So for example, I can select that one. I can add the constraint animation. And we're going to see how that mesh will be deformed according to that. And this is why it's uh, quite weird that Katia V5 has the functionality to deform meshes. But as we can see, we cannot use a subdivision over here. So I have a subdivision created, which if I will double click, this will take me to Imagine Shape um, editing, even though I am within Shape Sculptor. But if I will try to use on that, so mesh to deform, the subdivision won't be a viable selection over here. So we can only add, as let's say, tessellated models because it's not necessary to have those in STL file format, just that uh, that is the most popular file format. One option would be to have this tessellated, but um, yeah, not sure if that workflow will be good because usually we don't want this to have this tessellated. So as you can see over here, we're going to have a mesh intersect, stitching, control points. And we're going to have the possibility to use uh, the tessellate over here. But that will just, let's say, lose all the um, editing capabilities of this. Now if I will use the mesh morpher, I can select the tessellated as the mesh to, to deform. So that will be an available um, selection, even though we're going to see that um, the pictogram over here will be the tessellate one. And I can select the target, I can click apply. But now if I will go within a subdivision and I will select this and I will move it, when I will come back, we're going to see that the tessellated will be updated. So the tessellated shape over here, but the morphing has not been uh, updated over here. So again, I will um, move the subdivision. For example, I will take it all the way over here. I will also maybe rotate it. And we're going to see that now that mesh deform will no longer uh, work. I will just undo this. And I will uh, leave the tessellated uh, subdivision within the same position. So I want this robot to be reset. Move this forward. And now uh, we're going to see that the mesh morphing will work as long as I will not move this on the X and Y plane. So on the Z axis it will work. But again, this is not what we really want within Imagine Shape. We want to have the possibility to merge directly freeform uh, shapes. So I don't know if there is a feature for that because I have searched for those and I didn't found any. So um, if you have any tips regarding this, let me know in the comment section. And you, if you haven't seen my videos regarding Fusion, let's take a quick dive into this. So I will add over here on <clears throat> a mesh. So this will be an STL file. As we're going to see, the file will be loaded. This is quite a heavy STL, so 200 megabytes. It may maybe take a while to process. We can also have it simplified. 
either directly over here with Infusion or we can do that in Blender. So we have the model loaded. I will click OK. And now, for example, if I will create a new freeform over here, let's say that um, I will position a circle over here. So I can define uh, either a sketch or I can start directly with a cylinder. Maybe in this case, it will be easier to just start with a cylinder. So somewhere over here, close to the middle, I will define this. Now I can specify the, um, the height of this. So let me just rotate. Since the STL is quite large, it is a little bit laggy on my older PC over here, but that shouldn't be any problem. Now I can check this from the top view. I will pan so I can see this better. So let me pan that again because I rotated that. So I want to see this from the top. Now I want to pan this. I can go to modify. I can select all the subdivision over here. And I will move this a little bit over here. Now in order to do that, that merge between a, a freeform and an STL, we're going to need to use the pull feature over here. So within modify, we're going to find the pull. And this will work, for example, over here, this one is set to automatic and it will search the most uh, close surface. For example, if I will click on this point, it will search for the point that is um, most, let's say, the shortest distance to that. And now we can, like this, rotate around the model, select all the points. If we want, we can do a rectangle select and select multiple. So yeah, if you want to see more fusion related content regarding this, I highly recommend you to check my other two videos. And as we can see, this works both with um, 3D scans like this. I will just hide that um, mesh for now. So the motorcycle crankshaft, so I can work a little bit better. And if, for example, I will have um, a surface over here, maybe I will define over here surface. So just a, a circle, have that extruded. And now if I will create a new form, okay, again, I have the possibility to match that, but now I selected a a cube so I want a cylinder I will make this 45 by 55 and now I just have to move this freeform so I will select everything move it a little bit over here and now using the pull feature over here I can select all the points over here and let me just deselect everything and select those and we see how easily those snap into position. So this is something that uh, I find really useful with Infusion. And this is the reason why I also started to use um, to use Fusion. Since the Freeform has uh, so, inter so many interesting um, and easy to use feature. Okay, so I hope that you find this video useful. If you have any comments and if you know a method that can align subdivisions to an existing surface, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching.